I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is Psych Hacks, Better Living Through Psychology. And the subject of today's short talk is don't blow the whistle on yourself. So obviously I'm taking this metaphor from professional sports. If you're engaged in the flow of any sport, you're focused on the play, you're focused on the ball, you're focused on moving further down the field. You shouldn't be focused on making sure that you are 100% within the rules of the game, within the boundaries of the field. Obviously, that's something you need to keep in mind, but that shouldn't be your priority. There's somebody else on the field whose job it is to make sure that you're in bounds and playing by the rules. That's the referee. You can't be both the MVP and the referee at the same time. You have to trust that if no one is blowing the whistle on you, you might still be in the field of play. The, the play is still active. Keep running down the field. If there's a significant problem, if you go out of bounds, people will let you know. Your coworkers, your partner, your friends, they'll call your attention to the fact that you've stepped out of bounds. Now, I'm not advising that you go out there and, let's say, flagrantly foul people to do things that you know are just against the, the, the rules and the spirit of the game. But on some level, if you're not fouling, you're not playing the game optimally. It's like, how successful could you be as a basketball team if your commitment was is to never foul anybody? Fouls are part of the game. And you don't foul willy-nilly, you foul strategically in the service of your goals. So the, I'm not asking you to do anything that's, that's against uh, your own conscience or to do something that is spiteful or technically against the spirit of the game. But if you're policing yourself, then that's energy and effort and focus that could be better expended in the service of your goals. Trust that there will be people around you whose job on some level is to give you the feedback that, hey, you might need to pick up the pace on this project a little bit, or, you know, you've been slacking off over here, or that wasn't cool what you did. People will tell you. This makes me think about machine learning optimization. According to research, the optimal rate of success for machine learning is 85%. If it's more than 85%, they're not really learning these machines, they're just demonstrating what they already know. And if it's a success rate of less than 85%, they're kind of struggling and most likely are going to make inappropriate or incorrect conclusions. But if they're incorrect 15% of the time, that gives them space to actually learn and to grow and to develop progress. So on some level, are you making mistakes 15% of the time? Are you stepping out of bounds 15% of the time? That's optimal. Because the more that you do that, the more you learn how to kind of walk the line if you, if you notice any professional athlete at the height of his or her game, the action is always on the line. It's like in tennis, the serve is what's right on the inside of the line. The, the wide receivers in professional football games, they're going down the sidelines and they're like putting toes on the field. The more masterful you get, the more you, you learn how to work with the boundaries because that's where the, the proficiency and the excellence really occurs. Thanks for listening. We'll talk more in future episodes. Bye-bye.